Hey everybody, sorry I'm late today. I had some things to do, I was supposed to do, and I actually didn't do them because uh, of uh, something uh, we humans do, which is not always smart, which is uh, not prepare, not uh, supposed to do something. And I would, long story, but I appreciate you coming. This is David Hilcher with the um, Dissident Science. Um, a lot of discussion about my last video, which was on isolated or networking. A lot of pushback on people who say um, they want to, in fact, uh, that isolation is very good. And so people can stay in isolation and that's totally fine. Um, not sure myself if that's, that's, I, I have experience with a number of people who are very good scientists, people that I have known for many years. They've worked in isolation. In fact, uh, it's not been the best. Uh, oh, look at that. I'm just like doing the whole screen. That's weird. Oh, no, no, I'm not. I'm looking at the wrong thing. Okay. I'm sorry about that. I've got so many things going on. I got my phone controlling my uh, computer at the same time. So I think now we're going to be doing a little bit better. Uh, but I thank you guys for coming. And uh, I know that, uh, uh, again, I'm normally starting at 9 o'clock. But uh, these days I had to push this back a little bit for something I had to do. So we're back. I said I was going to be talking about the, the Sky St Scholar today. I'm going to take a look at him. I, I've seen his videos. He does really great productions. I believe he's from the EU. So um, that's uh, Electric Universe. I'm sorry. Everybody like using lingo. But uh, I've got to understand that not everybody uh, knows all the lingo. But like I said, um, my last video raised quite a, a lot of uh, dander quite a lot of people arguing who normally don't argue with me, but um, that's okay. Um, I think the only difference in my experience, uh, I've debated to even do a video on this and I'm right now leaning toward not doing a video and keeping maybe to this live session, just sort of talking about it in some generalities. But I, I see, I have seen and I see a lot of I've been involved with people working outside the mainstream now since uh, 1992 subtract that from 2018 you get 26 years and over that time I've seen really some amazing scientists uh, met them I know them talk with them many are still alive some of them are not but the one one thing I see that sort of makes me sad in a number of ways is that how people isolate themselves, a lot of times uh, brilliant people, and I wish they would have, for instance, joined our group and joined in the discussions that we have at our uh, conferences. Um, my mentor, for example, Dr. Ricardo Carazzani. Um, I saw him only once um, uh, talk with a group of people and sort of discuss things at a blackboard. It was really great. I think I took some pictures of these things, but I don't know <laughs> where those things are anymore. That was back in 1999. Uh, Dr. Carazzani was invited to speak at, on Long Island at an astronomy club where I guess Einstein used to hang out a little bit but uh, he gave a talk which was pretty unusual it was also very unusual it's a good story because um, in 1999 they were talking about we were talking about redshift and for this amateur group of astronomers who met pretty regularly and a lot of them had some really great telescopes some of them they made themselves pretty big ones and we were there out. Uh, we went also were out there for a night of uh, stargazing, which and planet gazing, which was really cool. But um, it was really interesting that during the the discussions, sort of the offline discussions, 
they the astronomy club amateurs had already said no big bang um explained away redshift and redshift the only ones they were they some of them at least the way they said it they couldn't figure it out was with um um uh, between galaxies so that was a really interesting thing for me to realize that in fact um uh people were um d discussing the big bang and saying yep we we don't we don't subscribe to the big bang we uh, think that redshift is caused by something else not by um movement and the other thing I saw, like I said, was my mentor for the first time interacting with other people and discussing things. And it was really quite fun to watch. I mean, he was really good. He really interacted well. But he didn't have any interest in presenting his stuff to people in, our, in the group that I had joined, which was the MPA at the time. And then in the beginning, I wasn't really so much a member, but was going there to, to meet like minds. And then I started listening to other people, and it was quite interesting what people had to say. There was a lot of kind of mm -hmm. stuff that a lot of stuff that I didn't really know about, and um, so, anyways, uh, I thought it was, I thought, man, this guy, you know, Dr. Karazani would just be really great with these, you know, going to these conferences and discussing things with other people. I think two things would have happened there. He would have quickly become a person that they respected because he's a really uh, super bright person, scientist, um, you know, very, yeah, he was very certain of himself, but he was, he was quite, you know, um, a dapper person, a, you know, when you discuss things with him, he would talk, he had a stru super strong opinion, but he still would, and I, when I saw that, I was sort of had the same feeling, and that's why I did that one video about isolation is because he's not the only person I've seen this happen to and I'm thinking what more you know he could have really given the world quite a lot of stuff a lot if he and I think he would have himself grown quite a bit if he would have hung out with the people in the NPA at the time or now the CMPS and so you know it's and I champion his work. I'm the one out there. I'm the no neutrino guy. Everybody knows that in our group. And that was through absolutely Karazani's work was mine. You know, I read his stuff and then I, I absolutely agree with his conclusions. Uh, some other people did too uh, on different uh, reasons for no neutrino. But again, it came all the way down. It came down to a self-imposed uh, isolation he continued to work he did a really great he, he generated the Bohr's atoms equations from um, autodynamic equations without special relativity and he said he really didn't want to do that but he was a wow well, he was in his 70s or 80s when he did that I think it was the 70s and he says you know I just don't have the brain power to do that but he ended up doing it it's on the website autodynamics.org but I'm not here to talk about Karazani's work more about uh, this idea of isolation you know oh no these pe people have to work you know on their own and there's just some people that are going to work on their own and they're going to that's the way it's going to be and then other people will uh, help them work out you know help them communicate what they're doing now, like I did with Karazani there's a huge opportunity missed and you know as much as Karazani got a certain step he didn't take other steps which my father and I took and um, you know and he's left out in that except for the fact that of course he's uh, we dedicated our, our book we're writing to him uh, he started us on the model we found or working on found a model we're working on and so you know that's just one story um, there are other stories of people today who uh, don't refuse to or they've maybe gone to the CMPS but they're only ah, people aren't listening to me and um, uh, why do I want to go there if no one's listening to me because I have something to say it's very important <laughs> I think I think the thing is is that 
you go to the conferences, you speak, and especially today, we record them, they go directly live, edited, live, and uh, available immediately, and recordings of them, and we get hundreds and hundreds of views on some of these, some of them thousands, and, um, you know, so you do get it out there, and you do have people then in our group that see it, and will comment it on, just like on the Saturday mornings. So, um, you know, it's, Again, I said somebody, I, I said, I know, uh, was uh, arguing, not arguing, but discussing with Lori Gardy, um, who uh, gave a talk at the CMPS. If you haven't seen it, you should go see that. Go to the CMPS um, web, uh, go to search for the Chappelle Natural Philosophy Society on YouTube. And, oh, no, you can go to youtube.naturalphilosophy.org. YouTube.naturalphilosophy.org and then go there and we have our Saturday mornings and this one was really quite good we're trying to get them more organized uh, the presentation for like about 45 minutes she gave a great presentation it's looking on the nature of light looking at, Plan at Planck's constants the energy equation with Planck's constant and also e equals mc squared uh, and it was a great discussion afterwards with some pretty smart people uh, talking about it so uh, really worth your while to take a look at that. She had asked me to take a look at them. I, I don't usually make it on Saturday mornings because of my schedule. Um, and But it's a really great group, and we're, we're sort of more formalizing it, so it's not so open and open. I think it's going to be open this uh, Saturday tomorrow because um, we don't have a speaker lined up. I'm trying to line up speakers if you want to speak yourself. Oh, here we go. I'm going to send a yawn across the universe here. Uh, but anyways, um, if you have something you want to talk about yourself and uh, um, you want to present, you can. Uh, what is the CMPS, Han? Oh, CNPS. It's the Chappelle Natural Philosophy S uh, Society. That's um, the organization that we have, which I claim is the best science organization in the world. If you take a look at at uh, Science Woke. Oh, Science Woke isn't up yet. <laughs> I'm sorry. But one of the uh, articles I write is it is the best science organization in the world. It's not very big, but we allow people to criticize anything as long as it's pretty scientific. You can't just get up there and talk about baseball. It's got to be about physics or cosmology or things that relate to that. It can be math because if it's related to it, which we do allow, philosophy, which we do allow, structures, just how structures go together because these things are important to people who are building models so anyways uh, the CM uh, our organization really started in the early 1990s 1992 93 with John Chappelle and some other people dr. John Chappelle um, he was the one who really started getting the everyone together he did it I don't even know I did it, it was before the internet so uh, I guess he knew people called people and um, they had a newsletter, believe it or not, and it was through snail mail, and they literally typed it out. Someone typed out the thing, made copies, and then sent it out. Um, they did com phone conversations, and then they planned uh, their um, uh, uh, conferences. And um, the first one I went to was in 1996. At that time, it was called the Natural Philosophy Alliance. Natural philosophy is the name we give... Uh, the uh, physics what when it was before it was physics it was called natural philosophy so if you look at in the uh, 19th century and before you're going to see natural philosophers those are pretty much the physicists now the um, the modern word physicists came in just recently so uh, what happened there was a split because some people got into our directorate uh, I won't talk about the politics per se because it's got some political imp implications that today could ruffle feathers. Uh, not interested in that anymore anyways. Uh, but those people eventually took over the NPA. Uh, we got, I got out of it. Greg got out of it. And we were really uh, two of the people who made it happen. And then we just decided they wouldn't. Uh, they, they, it was like a, trying to get a hostile takeover. Took all the money. There's a lot of money there, actually. A lot of money. But thousands and thousands of dollars. And these people were just off their, in my opinion, off their rocker, um, a little crazy. And um, 
uh, we ended up saying, okay, that's it. We just dropped the whole thing and, re and, and took everybody 98.5% of uh, the NPA, the Natural Velocity uh, Alliance, and we decided on the name to make sure because they were saying, well, you can't use the same name. Um, and the people who were sort of running it thought it was going to be like an organization that they're going to, it, it was sad. Uh, you can still go to it, um, worldnpa.org, go to it. It's a sort of a dead website now. They even had a few conferences where they feel, fooled people where they didn't even tell them that things had changed. So it was, again, it was real sad. They blew all the money uh, on stuff, and we, we had a good we had a good bank uh, uh, there. And that's too bad because we could use it actually right now. So right now we're not running on fumes, but we sort of, um, do our conference, get a little bit of money, but we're not actually growing because we're taking our expenses to pay for websites and all that kind of stuff. So the CMPS is the, we decided to name it after John Chappelle so people would know because at the time there was still a movement that was saying that, um, uh, you know, just politics, bad names and calling and all that kind of stuff. Um, I wasn't doing too much of it, although I had zero respect for those people. And uh, uh, we decided on the name John Chappelle in front of our organization because then we, <laughs> that would keep the NPA and move it over to this organization. Uh, if we were to just said National Philosophy Society and, and, and NPS, um, people would have... Um, you know, maybe said, well, it's completely different, it's not the same. Uh, but the people who made up the MPA, like I said, 98% of them came over to us. So uh, we're, we're well over 300 active people worldwide, which is pretty good, which is actually the highest we've been. Our um, actual in-person conferences have been less attended. We've gone through a, um, a generational change. The people that I met in the 1990s, the brilliant people, half of them have already passed on and died. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, of course, unfortunate. But, um, you know, I got to know them. If I look at even in my movie, uh, lots of people uh, in that movie are gone now. Um, you know, when I met them, they were in their 60s and 70s. Most people aren't on great diets, so uh, they're you know suffering from old age which is really more suffering from eating poorly and uh, actually Donna uh, Eb, uh, Dr. Eberly Spencer I think still alive she's must almost be a hundred she came from a family of vegetarians been vegetarians all their lives and they live they're living uh, pretty well I guess but uh, anyways that's the long and short of it so this CMPS the John Chappelle natural philosophy and we call it society we also set it to be not a not a 5013C, but a 175C or something like that. If you go to our website, natural, uh, naturalphilosophy.org, um, you will, in fact, uh, see that we decided not to become a 5013C for exactly the reason we were taken over before. So we made, made it so that our bylaws allow us as members to totally throw out the entire directorate. The way the, the uh, bylaws and the MPA was written, and people knew that because they were trying to have a hostile takeover of the group. Uh, the reason they did that uh, uh, was because they knew the 5013C actually had the ability to do that. That we as a group, we voted them out. We had an official uh, public vote to get rid of the, the directors. And uh, that was something we, um, did and we had an overwhelming vote i don't know 95 percent of the people said they wanted the uh, president and uh, at least one or two others two or three of them to uh, vote out and we would have elections again they refused to do it because they held on to the 5013c and of course uh, that's why when we have our we have our operating agreement now you're not going to see that and in fact here it is uh, is our business purpose operating agreement and in here you will find uh, um, uh, that uh, uh, we we do let's see here's membership it talks about membership all those who pay dues uh, by unanimous vote the board may appoint honorary members and set their rights and privileges board of directors 
uh, there, terms of office, board meetings, all those kinds of things. Um, boards will be elected. There is something here, um, chief scientist officer, those kinds of things. Uh, journal editor. These are just sort of things. Annual conference. Um, here we go. Removal for cause. <laughs> this is the, the, the one we added there. And that says members of the society have the right to remove a board member based on a majority vote of the membership, given that board members are elected in the first place and that they may, may be voted out after three years. It is so hoped that this provision will not be necessary. However, it is available if membership decides that it is necessary. So that was one of the things that we did. And um, uh, that's the reason exactly is for the, our, our uh, um, uh, organization is to ha is not to have that problem that we had before so um, hold on I'm going to close the door real quick here I'll be right back my daughter is singing so um, I don't know how she does that uh, if you can hear me I'm sorry about that but uh, uh, she's got quite a voice she wants to go to Juilliard she's 13 I think she can make it she's very talented uh, but uh, <laughs> I don't know, maybe she, she likes showing off, I guess. But uh, anyways, I hope that answers all the questions. Um, there I go off. I can see myself here. Uh, stop. Oh, okay, sorry. I keep uh, getting a jazz straight. Peter North here. Educational stream. Uh, all righty. Uh, that's 90%, 5%. Ouch. Yeah. Please look at the die hole, uh, die hole formation and explanation uh, for the drop of magnetic resonance over the last hundred years or so, frightening would take your take on it. Hmm. I'm not. I'm not sure what that is actually. Die hold foundation, an explanation for a drop in magnetic resonance over the last. Well, first of all, I'm not sure what right magnetic resonance means. I mean, this sounds a little bit new age to me. Um, I'm not into that kind of stuff as much. Everybody has a right to do what they want. Uh, I don't poo-poo anything uh, like that. But um, when a uh, uniform static magnetic resonance can mean nuclear magnet. Uh, but that's, I'm seeing, I'm looking online before I show it to you. But um, let me see, he says to look at... Um, uh, die hold foundation but I, I don't know um, I will tell you about um, there is some interesting uh, don't know if I have that book with me here I've got three books now um, that talk about magnetism because we were talking about um, what was it um, talked about him last week oh boy can't remember Ken Wheeler. Anyways, I've got some new books here, three of them actually. Um, the other one, I'm going to leave again for a second to the front over here. I'll be right back. You can hear me, blah blah blah, because I think the book is here. Oh uh, yes, it is. I found it. You can probably not hear me. Here I come. I get books, and I ordered one book actually. Um, I will talk about magnetism, uh, and I'll see if I can find something about uh, what you were talking about. Die, die bulb foundation. Okay, I see it there. Um, magnetic resonance, though. It doesn't... <laughs> I'm seeing everything but magnetic resonance. Anyways, I um, uh, want to get you... Uh, this one's from James Carter. I think sometimes he just puts us... I think that's what he does. He pretty much like takes the same book and then sort of rebrands it so you can see here he says why Einstein was an ignorant fool and and he wanted he sent this to me because I think he's been watching my YouTube channel this YouTube channel and he said well hey um, I've got a non-ether theory maybe you want to talk about it I did did I talk about James Carter his work I think I did but if I didn't I need to um, uh, he's in the book um, Physics on the Fringe, which is the, the uh, really the only book that ever got out into big public uh, by Margaret Wortham, 
and uh, this is Physics on the Fringe. It specifically looks at James, James uh, Carter's work. You can see it here. Uh, you can see those diagrams. Um, it's an interesting read. You could pro I would you know I would recommend it if you if you want to read it. It is a layman's type of book um, in some sense. Even uh, and it talks about it uses James' work as and the the uh, author talks extensively about it. Um, I have some opinions about that. Um, I've had st I have a lot of stories about uh, Margaret Wortham. Uh, I went to see her in 2012 with my mom and dad. Um, you can see there, to David, with immense admiration for your work with the MPA, let's stay in touch. Uh, so, uh, oh, yeah, my name's in here. I'm not in too many books of people's, but um, that's not the major point. The major point is, is that, you know, she wrote about the physics on the fringe. Um, I also just ordered this book myself. It took weeks and weeks to come. wasn't that expensive. I don't even remember. It's pretty cheap. And um, uh, seeing Redshift, uh, re seeing Redshift, uh, cosmology and academic science. If Lori Gardy was here, she would say, "Oh, that's pretty cool." Um, uh, and so I'm going to be reading this, and then I'm going to do a, uh, a report on it, a uh, video on this. Um, I read pretty fast, so I should be able to get through it. Uh, Houghton Art, 1927 Dash. This is before he died. This is from 1998, so it's 20 years old. And this book, folks, um, this is the book in geology. This is the book, I will say it again, in geology. This is James Maxlow. He is the, he's, uh, the premier geologist in my opinion in the world and the reason he's premier geologist is because he is writing about expansion tectonics and actually mass gain and so he's taken all his work and put it into this uh, new book and of course if you notice it um, first of all it's a very handsome book uh, beautiful and um, it's again I'm going to be doing a report I've read pretty much halfway through it. I know a lot about his work, so a lot of it's repeated in some sense, but he puts it all together. And uh, if you notice the title of this, uh, again, I will get back to the magnetic fields. Um, Beyond Plate Tectonics, and it says, Unsettling Settled Science, and it says uh, James Maxwell. Now, it doesn't say, and I'm going to point out a few things on the marketing, and... Honest to God, I don't know if this is going to help him, but maybe it will. But the idea is, is that you want to try to hide it from controversy as much as possible. Um, I have the book. Um, do I have it here? I probably do. Um, I've got, you know, I've got the book from Samuel Warren Carey. Come on, where are you? And he wrote it, and he didn't have. He had a book where he had expansion tectonics, but he didn't say it outright. So if you notice again, this book. Sometimes I have things in my background. I just like get him out of there. Um, so th this book says beyond play tectonics, doesn't say expansion tectonics, or the heck, you know, uh, the heck with. Uh, um, uh, plate tectonics it's all it's a garbage or the fool or, or something more you know and, and that's okay everybody can do that it's like this one I mean look at that title it's uh, why Einstein was an ignorant fool <coughs> excuse me um, and so um, again a great book um, it's little tough reading but if you were like science you can uh, read this book and get an, an idea about, and I'll go through it. I'm not going to go through it now, but I'll, um, basically you can get an idea of expansion tectonics, where it is today. And he talks about this in all geological terms. He's got lots of pictures in here, actually, uh, quite good of his models and things right there. I have two doors closed. If you hear any singing, it's because 
my daughter's got a, a too loud of a voice so I apologize but um, anyways one of the interesting uh, chapters but I, again I'll talk about it uh, later is chapter 11 this is quite amazing it says what it says propose a proposed causal mechanism for the expansion of the earth and mass increase here you have a geologist who came to us many years ago saying well, i need your help i gotta know why mass increase happens and we actually have at least two or three explanations or models that will actually describe um, why mass increase will happen. And that gets me into the question of magnetism. And um, uh, let's see, uh, be understanding, you know, my level, yeah. Um, so, See, theoretical Air Force Ken Wheeler, right? I think that was what I was trying to. Dave, I was surprised to see that quite a few people I know are not Big Bang people, nor are they religious. Um, yeah, and um, I guess um, what I, you were saying, uh, Lisa, uh, you're surprised to see quite a few people I know are not Big Bang people, nor are they religious. Is that just your friends in general? It is interesting to ask your friends in general. I'm going to get to the magnetism. Uh, to ask your friends in general about uh, those kinds of things is, uh, hey, what do you think about the Big Bang? If relativity is wrong, would that really bother you? And the truth of the matter is, it doesn't. Most of the time, people go, eh, I don't care. And there's one big reason it doesn't affect them. There's nothing it does. They're not... There's no emotional attachment to, to it because it doesn't do anything for them. Uh, particle physics, most of com uh, a lot of cosmology doesn't do anything. The Big Bang doesn't do anything for anybody. Um, the only thing people sort of don't like is not going being able to go faster than the speed of light. Why can't we go faster than the speed of light? That's one of the things the average person says. But if you say, you know, the Big Bang, eh, that's not wrong. Everything didn't explode from a, oh, I, I'm surprised. So is that I, I was uh, curious as to uh, who was saying that. So that was a question back to you, uh, Lisa. And then um, let's see. Uh, geology is be interesting, please. Okay. The magnetic uh, the dy the magnetic dipole. You know, I'm going to look this up. Magnetism is one of the things that people say, like Ken Wheeler, and I asked. Um, Lori Gardy uh, about um, Lori Gardy about the uh, Ken Wheeler. He says everything's in the universe is magnetic. I said, okay, well, what does he say magnetics is? What is the magnetics? It's like the e EU, the electric universe. It's all fields. It's all electrical. Well, what is that? And um, you know they try to explain it somehow. And uh, so, and her answer to that from Ken Wheeler was, oh, he hasn't found it yet. And my reply back to her was, well, guess what? There are at least two or three models that already tell you what it could be. Why isn't he looking at them? And one of the reasons is, is he's not interested. And that's, and then, he, then I also use the word dangerous. Again, I love Lori Gardy. Uh, uh, this is no knock on her. I love the interaction. She was absolutely all right to make a comment because I said something about uh, being in isolation is dangerous. And I actually meant it, but not dangerous. She took it as dangerous for everybody else. And I know it's dangerous for your own work. If you are working in isolation, it's dangerous. And the reason it's dangerous is because you can, you can end up, and if you're like Ken Wheeler, or even Lori Gardy, if you don't look, he says, well, I'm not interested in that. Well, if you base everything on ma magnetic magnetic fields and you're not interested in what people are saying, what magnetic fields are, whoa, is that bad? 
And that's dangerous. That's dangerous for your theory because someone's going to come along and said, well, you know what you're saying is true, but it isn't true. Like in our model, we have a, a, a mechanism for, for magnetism. Uh, again, uh, our model isn't right or wrong. It's a model. And in our model, we can, uh, we can say that for fact that the universe isn't all magnetic. The universe isn't all electro electric. In fact, there's gravitational aspects, there's uh, an electrical aspects according to our model. So our model says there are numbers of things and it, they all live and can be described by moving mass, just like Borkert said. The entire universe, all it is is moving mass. That's all we have. And that's what our model is. So if you're Ken Wheeler and you say, well, I haven't found it yet. I'm not really interested in it. I'm going to work on my system over here. Well, someone's going to be working on the, uh, their model with a model of magnetism. Then say to Sam, let's say, please, guys, this is just an example. Let's say, well, let's make a better example. I won't use my model, uh, my father's model, my model. Let's use an ether model like um, Yonel Danu, Dr. Yonel Danu. Um, great experimental phys physicist in um, uh, Romania. And he has his model called uh, a, a basic mo a basic or fun, I don't remember, it's something like that. It's like the simple model of ether or bo basic model of ether. And so he has uh, magnetics as flowing ether. Now that's cool and I don't see a problem with that. Uh, and the, the thing is though, if magnetics is the ether and he's describing that and he's going to get uh, answers to things, that could contradict some of the conclusions and some of the work that uh, Ken Wheeler is doing or anybody else who says, I don't care, I'm going to work in isolation. And that's the problem. So if one of the ether uh, models becomes very popular and as we are the CMPS that we're working at and we have the particle models and we have the, the ether models, which right now seem to be the two main models um, uh, out there. And they, and like our model says to Ken Wheeler, magnetics, magnetics is a part of the universe, magnetic fields, but it isn't everything. And here's where it isn't and here's why. Then that's why I was saying. So it is dangerous to stay in isolation, in my opinion. Um, you know, it's like the universe is, is not a complicated, but there's a lot going on in it, and we don't know, and there's a lot of behaviors that we have to be able to describe. So, uh, very interesting. Let's see here, uh, Lisa Harmony. Yes, friends in general, and one of them of somewhat of a scientific degree in biology. I know it doesn't really relate, but I thought it was interesting. Well, but it does. People who like science, just because you're a biologist, biology uh, deals with uh, physics all the time. And um, so, you know, that's, that's true. Uh, Steve Beck, uh, being in isolation is good. Yeah. Newton was mostly worked in isolation. No. Newton, <laughs> Newton had a position at the university. He worked on his work. In isolation but believe me he had interactions with people about it and um, you know he didn't just come in like from the mountain and gave the tome down to people he was working on stuff in fact if I if my dad knows this a lot better so everything I say could be completely lie but from what I remember my dad who really studied Newton's life much more than I did I think he was sort of like writing us princip principia in like a, a notebook like back here and he goes yeah I'm, I'm writing this thing over here and while he's he's been talking about this and he, he didn't go you know this whole idea we have this romantic idea I mean he invented calculus the calculus that we use today isn't even close to what he was writing um, so there's a lot of things even Einstein's work Dr. Um, uh, Edward Dowdy from NASA retired scientist and uh, CMPS his claim to fame, you should know Dr. Edward Doughty, is he talks about and shows that general relativity doesn't work because when you're outside the corona of the sun, space time is supposed to bend light. It doesn't. But anyways, he uh, reads fluent German. He's an American uh, scientist. And he says, man, do we interpret Einstein's, what he even says about his own work, wrong. So we have to be really careful about historical, hysterical, 
historical recreations and what we say that I, yeah, Newton, Newton didn't work in isolation for, for he was isolated because of the plague for a while. He went off and thought those times are very necessary. But even uh, Dr. Karazani worked on his own for four years. Yeah. But then he came up with the equations and then, you know, uh, he talked with other people about it and he consulted with other people and he needed to do that more, in my opinion, for sure. Uh, I, I regret that he did. But working in isolation is fine. But I will tell you, if you do not get out and talk with people about it, test it out there in the waters today, we have people like, I'll give you an example, Harry Ricker, go to go tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, log into uh, our, um, uh, in fact, I got to put that up there. I've got to I got to log in and get that up there. But in fact, now I'm talking about it. I got to make sure there's a, a link to it. But we have our Saturday morning uh, video conferences, which Lori, Lori Gardy, the fractal woman, gave a really great talk. It's on our website, of course. And um, we, uh, uh, we have that. And Harry Ricker uh, has been looking at people's theories, different ether and particle models, for quite a while. And like myself, I'm the same way. For 20 some years, I didn't have my own part, model. I had nothing. And I was, I was looking at everybody else's models. I was never convinced by any of them. Uh, well, that's not true. Um, I picked pieces of ones that I thought were really good. And I, it really made sense to me. And I, you know, a lot of times, like you know, Glenn Borkert, he has certain things that I agree with, and the ether part, no, I don't. And, but the rest of it, the neomechanics and the infinity, that is gold. And uh, so uh, I got to look at all those kinds of things and I got to be, you, you get to be good at seeing argumentation because you've seen it all. You've seen different arguments about disproofs. People think they have disproofs. There's never a disproof or proof. You can only have supporting and supporting less. And uh, so that's, that's um, so when you have people like Harry Ricker, myself, other people who are not necessarily attached to a theory like myself, I am now, but I absolutely can talk about Jeff Yee's theory. I can talk to him about what he's doing. If I have a suggestion for it, I can talk to him, even though I think at the fundamental level, it's a better model, but it's not going to be the best model in my opinion. But I can still talk to him about it and still see it and still see it argue. And I can tell him, you know, this argument you're making about why particles can't do that. For instance, he does in one of his videos. I would tell him, you can't say that because we have the particle model that goes against what you're saying. What you need to say is historically the way it was looked at, perhaps. So those kinds of comments that we have only come from our ability and our looking at lots of things, us as a group analyzing and discussing them and finding out these are fundamental newbie problems. I will tell you, isolated work, people who work in isolation almost always have newbie, if they come to our group, have newbie when they do their presentations about what they're working on, or I go to the website like Ken Wheeler, and I go to the page where he discredits uh, Newton's uh, equations for gravity. I will tell him, according to his own idea that the the universe is made up of magnetism his argument about why newton is is uh, failed is erroneous uh, it is not a good one he needs to re throw that out and say newton was great but he didn't have a mechanism i am proposing that magnetism is a mechanism for the entire universe i don't know how gravity works that's what he should be saying but his argument that it was action at a distance without anything and that's bad no newton even told he's no he newton took it to this level and he didn't find the mechanism so those kinds of arguments anybody who's working in isolation they come to our group we can list 10 things i'm going to see if i can remember those things maybe make a video of them of 10 things that people do when they're in isolation that they don't think about that friends i'll give you a really good one here's a good one energy isn't real force isn't real but people talk about it as as it is oh i have this energy people come to us new and they say you know well my my whole uh model of the universe is based on this type of energy i go 
well, that's nice, but energy isn't real. What's real in your model? No, no, energy is real. You know, so that's that's a good one. And everybody who people have been around long enough, and then when they're challenged by it, two things happen: they either ignore it and go away and go back into isolation, and they're gonna be stuck, or they go, "Oh yeah, you're right. I need to change that. I need to understand that," and they put that on top, and they improve on their model. They improve on the way they talk to people, and we can talk correctly to each other. Is energy useful? Yeah. But as if you watch Lori Gardy, and if you watch uh, in, in the um, video from last Saturday, we have the next one coming up this tomorrow, uh, which I'm supposed to be, uh, uh, I got to do that. Uh, I forget. I'm going to have to put that up there, the link to it. We have one coming up with Jeff Yee. So if you go to, I'll, I'll show you all this, but I need to put that while we're talking here. I'll put that up there. Uh, so what what we have is on last Saturday, we had Lori Gardy talking about uh, 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 light, and we had um, uh, uh, Harry Ricker, and he was making comments about how um, that what she was talking about uh, was treating one part of the equation. She had said this, he made it, I can't remember exactly the argument, but if you go there, you're going to hear an argument of how a person like Harry Bricker uh, is talking with Lori Gardy, who is just starting to get her work, starting to interact with the CMPS. She's tried to interact with physicists around her. That's just a waste of time. No offense, uh, uh, Lori. Um, in my opinion, you're just, don't do it. It's an illusion. Uh, it's never happened but that's okay mm. so when she gets to talking to people in our group people like harry ricker can look at it and say oh in your argument you're talking about this why because i've seen it a bunch of times in these other people's work and this is what you really need to do and she goes oh okay she stepped back looked at it and she's getting in, in it she is a newbie in our group and but she is, I love her. She's got a brilliant mind. She's got really great ideas. She is excellent at pre uh, presenting. In fact, I'm trying to get her. She wrote one article for Science Woke, and I'm trying to get her to write more. She's, she's quite good. But it was great to see, you know, the interaction there. And that's what's missing if you're in isolation. So you risk that. You risk me or Harry Ricker or somebody else, who uh, Glenn Borkert, or Jeff Yee going to your website, finding something you found that's really great, saying, throwing the rest away, taking that, putting it together with theirs, and have a chance that their model's going to be better than yours because of you. You've been in isolation. You are, you're, you, you're going in your directions. This idea that someone is going to find something and they've got it here. I found it. I am now going to give it to mankind. Doesn't happen. Not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. Um, even Newton stuff had to be chewed on, worked on for about a hundred years before it, it became more commonplace. So, folks, I mean, I'm just telling you. I've seen it over and over and over and over. Work in isolation, great. Test it out in the CMPS world because that's the place where you need to go. You're not going to test it out on your friends. Mainstream science is just going to laugh at you. They're, there's, they're just going to spend their time trying to figure out how you're, you're not doing it correctly. So um, anyways, I go on. All righty. I'm going to go back. Being in isolation is good. Talking about Newton. I told you last read. Read the book and his view of 2000 video on magnetism. Okay. Uh, maybe you're talking amongst yourself. If I teamed up with some Big Bang proponent, it wouldn't last. I don't understand that, Steve. Why would you team up with a Big Bang proponent? I think when, it, if you look at the CMPS, a big majority say the Big Bang's wrong. A big majority say relativity's wrong. A big majority says a lot of particle physics you can throw out. A big majority are now and that it's, it's taken time, are now saying, yeah, expansion tectonics and mass increase looks like it's happening on Earth. And, um, and a big majority are starting to use our words so that we use vocabulary that's common. 
So when we say energy, even though it's a concept, we use it when we talk about energy. We know it's not a concept and we don't objectify it. It's like space time. Space is 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 a dimensional thing with three dimensions, no more. There are no four dimensions, there's three dimensions. And time is some is movement. Time has to do with movement. You can't have time without movement of something. Uh, movement even the clock, even if whatever. But you can't put them together and then make something and objectify it and say now it's something and it's bending. You know that uh, who's a really good author on all that is Dr. Glenn Borkert. He's the one that says, look, we got to be careful on how we use our words. So when we get together, we're talking the uh, you know the same vocabulary. We would spend most of our time arguing and not researching. Yeah, well. Get together with somebody who doesn't believe the bang, Big Bang is right. Come to our group, which is the majority of them. Um, that's the beauty of YouTube. <clears throat> you can work in isolation, make your videos, and share them with folks and agree with your postulates. You can't have interaction. Uh, as much as people will make comments, you can't have the back and forth. In a back and forth conversation that you don't get on YouTube, is you can do your stuff and someone can make a comment. Most of the time you're gonna blow it off. I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm gonna call you out and say, yes, I'm working in isolation, it's good, I can just look at all the stuff and then I don't need your interaction. You do need the interaction because what happens is you have an emotional attachment to your work, you have emotional bias to your work and unless you come along and smack it, someone comes along and smacks it, you're going to sit there and just argue. You're going to say, oh, someone gave me this uh, rebuttal against something I'm doing, but I argued it away. That's an emotional response because you would have to say to that person, okay, on my YouTube comment, you said that this is wrong. This is not correct. You should be saying that this way or your model should throw out uh, dark energy and dark matter because it doesn't exist and here's why. And then if you were to come back and say, well, no, you're wrong. Dark energy does exist and dark matter. Here's why. Here's, here's what, and, and you convince them. Then you can convince them. That's what happens when you have human interaction. You, are not, you have two people, maybe they're even emotionally attached to something, and they're, they're talking, and what's happening is they say, oh, um, you know, you're wrong because there is no dark matter. Oh, yes, there is, blah, blah, blah. And you come back and that person comes back and there's a back and forth and back and forth until maybe you realize, oh, well, uh, dark, enter dark matter was only invented because they can't explain the faster um, stars at the end of the galaxy. And you can actually do that with Newton because the, the gravitational field of a galaxy is not a uniform one, which it isn't. Oh man, I get that argument. Okay, I've got to throw away dark matter as a, a, you know who does that? One of the greatest scientists of our generation, Dr. Glenn Borkert. He just had it, point uh, three on his website. He had it and um, I said, okay, come on. I said, you know, I, I don't know if I'm gonna do a video on it, I'm gonna write him, but Glenn, in trained ether, is, he says that uh, dark energy, dark matter is entrained ether. Part of this comes from people in isolation like this. He's not in isolation. James Maxwell gets out there. So I'm not treating him. He does his work in isolation, but he gets out there, writes books, takes interactions. And believe me, a lot of his goods, he's got a lot of acknowledgments here. He went around the world and talked to other people who are doing expansion time. He got on planes and went places. And that's why he has such the geological book of our generation. It's right here in my hands. So <laughs> I get off on these rants. And I forget what I was saying. I'm going to go back. Get back. But um, anyways, let's see. Video conference, not actual weekly, simplicity of magnum, blah, 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 production meeting. No, no, no. I've got to do the science discussions. I'm going to copy this one, put it up there. And so you'll see it. So those of you tomorrow who want to uh, tune in to the CMPS, I'm just going to change the date on this and get it to December uh, 29th. December 29th. All the rest is going to stay the same. I'm building this right now. Uh, Bill Lucas, it'll be, uh, no, this will be uh, not Bill Lucas. I will get rid of that. And I'll put in Franklin Hugh, our 
uh, moderator for um, there he is put it in there put it in Franklin and then we'll be done I'm sorry to do this but I'm just doing this for you guys um, just in case you want to go and see uh, Franklin Hugh will be leading okay there we go sorry more chop copy the event and voila it should be there on our website I should show you that um, we're trying to make this better I'm trying to get people lined up way ahead of time so we can do uh, that so let me go to the website now let's just I'll let you see it oh there it is it worked oh my gosh I got a program that's a little bit better but I will show you this folks there's the browser and this is our uh, CMPS website um, you can see our conference coming up in 2019 our YouTube channels uh, there's Jeff Yee's, there's uh, uh, Nick per Percival, my father's, mine, and our own YouTube web channel, which you can then see last week's. Here you can see right here um, that, uh, yes, uh, I was, uh, we'll try to make it. I'm, I was trying to make it. But uh, anyways, uh, in 11 hours and 38 minutes, um, they will be having it. It's 10 a.m. Uh, and you can click on this. And even if you come to our Facebook page live and it's during this, I have a big yellow button that comes up. You can click on it and it's through Fuse. And then you can see. So again, my uh, comment is that yes, you can work in isolation. Yes, you have to. You gotta work on your own and think about stuff. But um, this idea that I can just get everything and do all my interaction like this, you can if you spend the time to do face-to-face -face Skype with with people who will actually be your friend and let you know where your stuff is wrong when you come to the cmps we give you we show no mercy yeah you can take it with a grain of salt and just say the problem is is most people say you just don't understand my stuff and the problem what they'll say back the problem is i do and everyone here does and we've seen this stuff before so and so did it so and so said it and so and so did it we've had this discussion 10 years ago and this is the conclusion we came and it is a very good conclusion and we're going on we're trying to impart this to you you can take it or not hey maybe this is the way i can get more people let me just say this too um who said that um steve steve beck if you are working on your work, why not show us? Why not on Saturday morning give a presentation and record it and let people interact with you? That's great. Believe me, you know I'm looking for a guy to, or a guy or a gal to come along and say, "Hey, I found it. This model is super duper. We could use this. We should let's all look at it. Here's why." Absolutely. You know, oh, I'm going to find a meme to to blow this idea away because um, I know Steve Beckin says um, the beauty of YouTube is you can work in isolation, make videos, share them, and folks that agree with your uh, with folks that agree with your postulates. Ah, that's not what you want to do. Getting people that agree with it is how you work on something that's common. But if you want to move forward, you got to find people who don't agree with you. And I will show you a meme that says exactly that. I'm rebranding these memes. Here we go. This is by Frederick Nietzsche. So let's take a look at it. There he is. This is from our meme page that I made up. I'm rebranding these all for Science Woke because that's going to be our marketing website. Here it is. This is my answer. It's not my answer to you, but it is the answer I give. The surest way to corrupt a youth is to instruct him to hold high esteem, uh, to hold in higher esteem those who think alike than those who think differently. So, if you are working on a model, it's working out well, and like my father and I, we work together. That's great. But we also work against each other because I'll come up and say, Dad, this is this in our model doesn't work. I'll give you an example. Our how how does light how does light get through magnetic fields if they're the same particle? 
but that's a general problem and it's a general problem and ours is just a timing problem but that's a good question and we you can question it but you don't the surest way to corrupt a youth or to corrupt yourself is to hold in higher esteem those who think alike than differently you've got to get out and see different opinions and different models German Einstein it's in quite digital format so we can't Google Translate didn't you have said uh, didn't you say that Einstein worked in isolation he did communicate um yeah isol he, he worked in isolation um, actually there's quite a bit of, of historical research on Einstein that's not too kind to Einstein actually and, in, in, and uh, one of the people in my film, which I'm thinking about releasing as um, I'm looking to go back on my scenes because I've got a lot of scenes I didn't put in the movie that are great. You know, I had to make a movie of about 90 minutes for a documentary and I've got scenes. I got a whole guy in there who's a good friend of mine who studied Einstein and his wife. His wife did a lot of his work. In fact, when they showed him a PBS special on that, 79 percent of the viewers after seeing it said, yeah, his wife influenced his work. Uh, he also had no references in his paper papers. He did not. Uh, he claimed till his death that he did. He was not influenced by the Michelson Morley experiments. For those who you don't know that, that's trying to find ether, this this uh, fluid out in the universe. Let's call. It, I'm just giving it a colloquial names, folks. But this sort of fluid out in the universe, or or gaseous stuff in the universe that light is a wave through. Well, they didn't find anything. And Einstein says, well, that had nothing to do with my conclusion that the Lorentz equations can, can generate. Um, uh, I mean, I can generate the Lorentz equations without uh, ether. Again, if you're a person who knows all this, that's okay. If you're not, don't sweat it. Uh, maybe I'll, I should do a video on that, uh, the history of that. But anyways, um, Einstein did not, he, if he were alive today, he, wouldn't be, he would not be published. He had no references in his paper. He uh, had people who helped them, including his wife, who he did not reference or give credit to. Uh, so not good, not good. And plus, special relativity is wrong. General relativity is wrong. The photoelectric effect is the, what gave us the photon. And photon, there's no such thing as a one particle of light. Light is has to be a plurality. It's either a plurality of ether lots of little particles which waves are being waves are through it so waves cannot be a particle so what we consider a photon in reality are more than one particle and they're not photons because that's what a photon is defined i'm going to that one i'm going to do a video on but that's more about our model uh, but it's not so much anymore people are talking about that more something he communicated with Max Planck and many others after after everybody worshipped him and then thought he was completely correct. Sky Scholar is, is why I am here. Hey, Steve. Hey, Steve. Uh, let's see. Um, you know, I will talk about Sky Scholar. Let's take a look at that. I, that's absolutely right why you're here. So um, first of all, just giving my general impressions absolutely fantastic uh thumbs up all the way um love his channel uh very well put together well very well produced he's i i guess I, I i gather he's from eu is that correct um steve beck steve beck if you could in the chat there uh say that um he einstein i'm i'm reading your stuff that um sky scholar guy let's see what's his name uh, I'll, I'll get to all this that's what i'm gonna do right now Da, 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 da. Sky Scholar. The thing I like about him is wonderful productions. He is now introducing, just like EU, he is introducing um, uh, people who do argue against the Big Bang, people who argue against the, the mathematics of black holes, that's uh, Stephen Crothers. He had on several times. Um, he also talks about alternative models for the sun. That's very much the um, 
um, um, ba -ba -ba -ba, the Electric Universe. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to take a look at his trailer here. And uh, that's always a good way to, to talk about it. Again, in great production values. And uh, let's, let's take a look at uh, how he does. He has a big sc green screen. I don't know. He's got any other people with green screen. If if he fl uh, flew out uh, Stephen Crothers all the way from wherever, but uh, let's take a look at this, and I will put the uh, volume up on this. There we go. I will mute mine so we will not get uh, it going through my microphone here. And let's take a look at his trailer. You can always tell a lot about that. Great. Theories surrounding the sun, the stars and the mysteries of outer space. Hello there, visitor, and welcome to the channel. Here at Sky Scholar, we're focused on theories surrounding the sun, the stars, and the mysteries of outer space. In order to understand the sun, we get into topics such as the laws of thermodynamics and make them easy to understand by cutting out unnecessary buzzwords and by providing high-tech illustrations that allow you to visualize each concept directly. Whether you're looking for a big picture view or want to examine these topics up close, Sky Scholar is the place for you. Hit the subscribe button to join me on this journey and as always, I'll see you on our next video. Absolutely. It's like what? You know, A plus on, on production, especially for uh, people working outside the mainstream. He's actually, I think his channel is April, May, just a little older than mine. And he, he's just putting me to shame. <laughs> I mean, look at this. He joined uh, uh, one month almost to the day, one month before me. He's got 300,000. He's coming up to, you know, it's going to be up to a half a million views. Uh, he's got, what, 5,000 subscribers. And um, quite amazing. 5,100. Oh, that's, those are the views. I think he's got, let's see. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Home. Does it have me? There it is. Whoa! Almost 10,000. Guys, just blows me away. I mean, uh, absolutely. So, uh, first of all, you know, congratulations. He's got high production. That helps a lot. Um, I don't, um, you know, it'd be great if we could do those kinds of things, but, you know, I can do what I can do. There's a lot, lot to do. And I have my full-time job. I'm sure probably he does too, but uh, probably comes out, I think he comes out with videos less frequently. So he does, that happens. And I do believe he does um, uh, get, let's see if he has channels. Uh, doesn't feature any channels. Hey, Sky Scholar. Hey, um, uh, Steve Beck. Tell Sky Scholar to put some channels, some featured channels, if he's uh, into uh, the Th Thunderbolts project, maybe. Hey, you could put mine there. I could put his there, exchange those kinds of things. But regardless, um, he could feature those things. And um, let's, let's see, let's look at some of his videos. Like I said, um, let's go down here. I know that, here we go. He had, um, look at the number of views too, thousands of views. I have one, I have about three or four that have thousands of views. But here we go. Does space time exist? Um, Steve Crothers wasn't talking that about that before. He is, uh, just recently started talking about that. Uh, black holes, escape velocity. Uh, he's talking, again, he's talking about uh, stuff that he's very uh, good at is black holes and special theory, uh, special theory of relativity, logical inconsistencies. Now, again, very nice. You can see he puts some graphics together. Uh, Relativity is wrong. Black hole escape velocity. These are some of the things you do with YouTube channels. I try to do myself, but you know I do these in fast productions. I don't have time uh, to do it. Even though you can see in my movie, I do a lot of graphics. But um, so number one really great graphics number two in production number two he is a critical thinker he thinks outside the box he will has no problem of putting up there things like you know theory of special relativity is wrong um, let's take a look at this i'm going to mute the output 
uh, for these guys. Let's take a look at um, how many people. See, he's got only 12 people out of 280 uh, that uh, disagree with something like that, logical inconsistencies. This is from the uh, EU, I believe. Uh, well, maybe, maybe not. Let's see, what does it say? Uh, meeting at the APS. Oh, no, it's the American Physics Society or something like that. So there he goes. So anyways, um, very well put together. Uh, I don't know a whole lot of his, about his work, um, um, his, his work about, let's see, what does it say here? What, he doesn't have anything? Uh, where is this about? He's got a lot of subscribers. He's 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 really doing well. Um, playlists. Black body relates thermal dynamics. Anyways, um, gravity gases and temperature. That that looks like the, that would be very interesting for me to look at uh, because I'm interested in gravity. Um, what is actually what is gravity this is also interesting to somebody like um dr edward dowdy who uh, talks about the uh, corona suns where light is bent so that's pretty cool uh does the sun have it have have charge <laughs> nothing has charge in my opinion. Charge is an arbitrary thing that we try to explain why things attract, but we don't really know why. Or we uh, chalk it up to an electric field, or we chalk it up to magnetism. We never, a lot of people who say that don't know what that is. And of course, newer models out there, uh, this ether model and particle models, uh, at least uh, part, one particle model and numerous ether models will tell you what that is, and they're, they're, you don't need charge, or positive or negative. Uh, two electron transitions in the chromosphere. Interesting. Again, this is he. He is much more involved in chemistry than I am, uh, but um, I would you know highly recommend it. Um, you know, subscribe. Uh, I am subscribed to it. I'm looking at this through through my dissident channel. Um, I don't know. Can I subscribe to his channel as a dissident? Did I do that? Subscribe. There we go. That's how you can do it. Anybody. But uh, I'm already subscribed through my his channel personally. Um, so, yeah, uh, was there any questions about? Let's see, Steve Beck. He has attended EU conferences, but he seems more focused on his solar model than ES stuff. Oh, very good. Thank you very much, Steve. Um, uh, yeah, I, I need to. Uh, I will say uh, I wanted to just generally talk about him today. I wanted to see what the interest was. But if people want uh, me to take a look at the sun model, that I, I, his sun models, that would be fine. Uh, he attended the, sus the suspicious observer thing last year. He's doing it again in, 19, in early 19, 2019. What's the suspicious observer thing? Is that just the name of something that they do? Dr. Dowdy, yes, that's Dr. Dowdy. Sky Scholar has been doing this stuff for a while before going on to YouTube. Okay, that's cool. Um, his page with papers, he also published papers in progress in, in physics. Okay, so it sounds like he is more of a sun model. Um, I am all for that. I will tell you one of the things I do uh, for those who don't know the electric universe and my own advice on that, I look to it a lot to be able to explain alternatively the what's uh, the old, the cosmology, I call it old, but the cosmolo cosmological um, models that people have for sun cycles, what the sun is, is it hot inside, is it hollow inside, is it cold inside, is it the hottest on the, on the outside, those kinds of things. Um, I think the electric universe uh, does a lot of work in those areas, and I think that's great. Uh, so I guess it sounds like that, you know, yeah, he... Uh, Maybe he has a following outside already, but he's doing gangbusters. If he just started his YouTube channel, uh, that's just super. So my hat's off to him. Yeah, I'd like to, I don't know if there's a lot of interaction we could do because he's more of like talking about something. Uh, you know, maybe he should have 
James Maxlow on to talk about the expanding Earth, but you know, I don't think it's something that he does sort of interviews. His is more like informational. I'm going to yawn off screen. See, now you can't see it. Anyways, okay, cool. Um, let's see. We saw the guy that helped him till recently. We saw him on the Eclipse video in Sky Scholar. Okay. No, no, sorry. I don't recall the name of the Suspicious Observer official meeting. I know you'll probably know some of the names that go there. Uh, the track record is... Their track record is wow. Okay. Um, oops. I'm just, I don't like to show the. It's one of the things people. I, one of the things I don't like about people's channels that they, that they browse around in front of you. Like I, I, I want to sit around in my time watching some person browse around. I need to, you know, my goal here is to be able to. Uh, I guess I guess what I am. To people is. Uh, the modern view of someone who really knows people working outside the mainstream, what those directions are, what those things are, uh, and be able to sort of articulate them, also to give some opinions about them, uh, also to be positive about anybody working out this main side the mainstream because I don't care what your model is and I don't care if you work in isolation all your life. Um, I commend everybody who does. So I'm not here to poo-poo anybody. I'm just telling you that um, our particle model uses th pieces of three models that never that got stuck in my opinion. And we're taking those ideas further, putting them together. You know, if your goal is to come up with the the thing and to keep making your model better and better. If that's not your goal and just having fun, great. And if someone takes a piece of it and then makes it a part of a better model, I think there's an emotional side of most people. They don't like that. And then when they find that out, they get mad and and they just, you know, I don't know. <laughs> just my opinion. So, okay. Um, I started at almost 9.30, mm -hmm. so we're about an hour and 15 minutes in. Um I don't know if I can look that up. I'm curious to, about that. Um, you were saying suspicious observer official meeting. Let's look it up, see if they have a suspicious observer. Um, I can't spell. Meeting. Conference. We'll find out if Google knows about it. Suspicious observers. Uh, dot org. Okay, there's something. That's interesting. Well, maybe it's a 350,000 enthusiasts cooperating to get results. Welcome to Suspicious Observers, an online research community investigating solar activity, earthquakes, astrophysics, and weather. Oh, okay, that's interesting. I'm going to. Uh, It's, oh, I'm not showing you this, so you can't hear it. Hmm, that's uh, that's interesting. Let's see if they have something here about this uh, about this site. No, I don't want to know about the site. I want to know about the organization. So yeah, it looks like people do um, observations. Uh, the Mobile Observer Project, blah, 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 family and kids, blah, 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 it's not saying much. The two puppies. Well, that's nice, but what do you do? It's one of the things about a uh, website. Please tell me what you are, why you're there. About this site, it's got, no, it says it's got, no. Oh, there you go. Contributors, about Ben. Contributors been on suspicion. Quake watch. Hmm. Don't know. The Mobile Observatory Project is this website or products of individuals who consider themselves to be skeptical of media and portions of the mainstream science. Oh, nice. 
Hey, there you go. See? Thank you so much. That's pretty interesting. So. Nice. Yeah, I like it already. Uh, oh, let me show you. When I finally uh, like something and should uh, see if I can get it to look a little bit better here. There we go. There's this uh, reading button that you can push to make everything a little bit bigger and all that stuff. The Mobile Observatory Project and this website are products of individuals who consider themselves to be skeptical of media. Absolutely great. Love it. Uh, and portions of mainstream science. Absolutely love it. Especially where politics and economics have always shadowed on those academics. <coughs> Very good. Uh, I have first-hand knowledge of such dishonesty and corruption. And so do thousands of others. Uh, a common email to me. What a terrible name. Nobody will ever take you seriously. <laughs> I've uh, heard a thousand variations on this. Questioning, oh, this is really interesting. Thank you, whoever put the uh, suspicious observe. Questioning the status quo has been deemed to be crazy and even dangerous. Huh, that's true. When it becomes a religion, blah, blah, blah. Yep. Thank you for yourself. So they're critical thinking. That's really great. Um, let me get this up here so I know where I'm going to, there we go. So you can see that whole thing. When did not thinking for yourself become a good thing? Uh, when we began, it was an unthinkable that the sun could uh, affect climate change, short-term weather, earthquakes, volcanoes, and other natural disasters. Uh, the idea that planets could, could uh, modulate solar activity was considered rogue and out, out, uh, the outer fringe. There are dozens of papers to the contrary published just since 2013, and in the realm of, of the climate, there are actually th uh, hundreds that were being ignored before that. Israel Devil's Advocate Office is not only a smart idea for them, but for the rest of us, for those, for most things in this world worth worrying about. Long-standing paradigms must be questioned, and it cannot be done without suspicious of the status quo. Very nice. This is sort of a, a larger, yeah, it's similar to, uh, well, don't really know. But I, 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 this is really cool. This is absolutely nice. Yeah, like it. Thank you very much. Uh, nothing isn't ad as it seems, because I am certainly one that um, uh, talks. Uh, um, I've got a new channel I want to start once we get our science woke. It's more progressive side because I'm a progressive. But uh, anyways, uh, it it talks about one of the things that we do is uh, people who believe in climate change or, or how do you say global warming. And I'm not saying I do or don't. Uh, I believe in, I say, we got to change the narrative to a destructing, destroying the earth, which is what we're doing uh, in lots of different ways other than, uh, you know, most of the pollution, most of the global warming uh, would be coming from animal husbandry, which also pollutes the land, which then washes out the sea and creates giant, giant dead zones. We don't talk about that. But uh, anyways, yeah, I mean, uh, corporations really... Uh, work with narratives and that's a whole different story for another website I, I'm looking to do because I don't want to talk about politics on this because I have friends on both sides of the coin who say there is data against climate change and there's data for we always have to be open all the time for all all the arguments on both sides there's bad data there's bad data uh, uh, bad analysis of data that isn't good analysis for proving uh, global warming is happening. And there's good stuff that is proving, there's not proving, but showing that global warming uh, should be occurring because of our activity. But they're on both sides. And the liberal side, in the, there's, we got liberals in our organization and conservatives in our organization. I happen to be a progressive. I, I don't have any, I have friends who are super conservative, but we all talk about science. So that's why I don't, on this channel, try to talk any too much about this but thank you so much this is really cool i love it um my take on uh do the the sun's affects our climate absolutely the sun affect uh our planet absolutely does um uh, uh talking about magnetic fields uh in this book in our model as well in our particle model we i, I even wrote a paper with a friend of mine at work uh basically the nucleons, the nucleons being the nucleus of atoms, 
that's in debate today. In fact, even mainstream is starting to say, there may not be neutrons. Oh my gosh. So let's just say there's a nucleus of an atom and there's stuff that goes around the atom. That's the way we should be talking about it today. Uh, well, it happens that the sun blows those apart and sends them our direction. So if it's sending, sending free, free nucleons toward us and they get caught up in, in the uh, magnetic field, which is what we call electrons, the magnetic fields just flowing around, those things can combine. They combine in the earth. In fact, in this book, he says they combine in the, let's uh, get off this here. This is really interesting. Hey, I'm not supposed to be telling you all this. This is getting ahead of myself. Chapter 11. There we go. Is it here? Um, it's in the D level. I'm trying to find the D level. There's uh, the interior of the planet, planet Earth, and they say this is what's in the interior of the planet, and they say it's in the D ring, the D zone, inside the Earth, where the geologist, Dr. James Maxwell, thinks that nucleons are joining up with electrons, and they are creating mass increase. That is, atoms appear out of nothing. Well, they don't appear out of nothing. They are being constructed. Water, methane, oil. Come on. How come I just, uh, I'm reading this book, and I can't find it. Darn it. I'm looking for one particular. I'm looking for the interior of the earth. Oh, boy, this is such a good book. <laughs> I want to just stop and start reading it. Boy. Oh, you want to see what expansion does? And one of the reasons, uh, see that? You notice the little curvy parts? That's because they were on a smaller orb. They cracked apart, and they still have curves. In fact, if you look, uh, I'm going to be distracted. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Gosh, this is good stuff. My hero. Nope. I keep seeing those, and those are cool uh, diagrams too. But where is the interior of the Earth? Well, there's one, but it's not showing the levels, the D level. Come on, I'm flipping through every page. What I'm trying to find is that the, the Earth is made up of, this is supposedly the interior of the Earth, and it has uh, zones, and those zones, you have the mantle, you have the you know place where the magnet is, all that kind of stuff and it's in this one particular place he thinks mass increase is happening where the stuff from the Sun is coming into the poles and I would say it's only coming into one pole mostly and it's combining and making increasing the mass it's gonna probably be like on the <laughs> it's on page 72 52 which to me is the beginning of the book I get through and usually Okay, there you go. All right, so there's the crust. There's the the maha, upper mantle, lower mantle, D layer, outer core, liquid boundary, uh, inner core. See that D level way down there? That's where he thinks mass increase is happening. That is just cool stuff, guys. That's just really cool. Uh, NASA considers suspicious observer, observer nowadays. Tell you, uh, tell you their track record is wow. Link to Robitaille on suspicious. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, 
so we're getting up on to an hour and a half coming up here so um, that's usually when I uh, drop off uh, but if you have any questions uh, you can ask them now um, it's amazing how the time flies I really appreciate people being here I also appreciate the interaction a lot I mean I, this uh, suspicious observer you know maybe I can contact and see if there's something we can do uh, in networking so uh, Miles Mathis he laws Robitaille but is suspicious uh, is suspect of Velikovsky and the Thunderbolts project for reasons he explains yeah yeah I mean you can again those are arguments uh, I mean it's it's a tough one to say v Venus came flying in 30,000 years ago that's a tough one can't say I wasn't here uh, but the stability of everything I think there would I don't know. I'd ha I, I would say first look at the orbits and see if there's any inkling of that happening because there would be after 30,000 years. I don't think it would have settled down then. But I think that's one of the things that Velkowski says. So um, questions, anybody? i got 10 observers, uh, numbers of people speaking, uh, others more silent, lurkers, people who like to make videos about me and say I'm all wrong. And then they drive people to me so if you're one of those people I want to thank you so much for every time people do a video uh, ragging on me uh, my subscribers go up although albeit very slow alrighty um, have you read uh, Miles Mathis I don't think so but I'll look it up uh, Miles Mathis um, Robitaille. Let's see. Writings of Miles Mathis. Writings of artist Miles Mathis. Double burner of prophet and a genius. Uh, okay. Um, no, I have not. I'll take a look at it. Well, I'm looking at it right now, but. No, I have not read him. Are you familiar with Eric P. Dollard? <laughs> Let's see. Oh, no. But um, this has to do with, I can see Tesla's wireless transmission technology answer to your question food for thought of those people who <coughs> like tesla first of all tesla's a great guy he's thinking out of the box uh, he was a brilliant uh, engineer and but i would say uh, he was also stuck and uh, the reason why and a lot of the people in tesla tech i think could go further is they are not looking to try to get a physical model of electric electricity uh, any of this stuff. If you look at my father and I's, my father's my model, or ether models, they're going to tell you why you can't transmit power the way he was trying to do it, and why it won't work that way. Um, and it's not, it wasn't a tweak, it wasn't something that he would have done. According to at least numerous models we have, you know, it's just not going to happen the way he, did. he, he was wanting to do it. Um, he, the the transmission he was doing is just not gonna you can't just I think one of the problems with Tesla was that he the things he was doing he thought was sort of invisible in some sense but it isn't I mean this stuff fries things I mean it's very powerful but you can't have so it's more Borkert statement that says you can't just have an incredible force coming at you and think it's not physical in some way and it's not going to affect something and i think that's the problem either you have to you just have to make it so high that anything around the transmission would have just be um it would be fried it just it would be impractical to be around it and so then you get into the problem is how good is that in in transmitting either ether waves or particle waves or particles in wires, which is I'm talking about physicality. I'm not talking about electricity. Electricity is not the movement of current. It's not the movement of holes left by electrons going the opposite direction. 
don't you know uh, but I would say Tesla was doomed at what he was doing. And he would have known that if he would have had models, or if we would have had models. By that time, we should have. But the way physics went uh, took a huge wrong turn at Einstein. Basically, the story, in my opinion, is Einstein started inventing because we're smart as heck. And because we're smart, we're the smartest things in the universe that we could start dictating the laws of physics to by using our logic and our our uh, um, thought thought experiments, and uh, that got us into trouble. In fact, thought experiments. Go look up Dave, uh, dissonant science, Einstein thought experiments. They are wrong. They're totally uh, based on a wrong premise because you can't isolate stuff in the universe. You can't go and say there's only a, uh, an elevator and there's gra there's only light. There is no gravity or there is gravity. And maybe there is or isn't. Everything is affected by everything. So uh, Pollard. So, yeah, I can see Xenix surface wave. Yeah, okay. Um, the way people understand Tesla, it will it will never work, it is because Tesla was a bad at explaining, or people change what Tesla said. Beats me, but Tesla is using the delta between nothing and something. I just be careful with that kind of stuff between nothing and something. You gotta really read Borkert, read Borkert, read Borkert, read um, the scientific worldview. Do I have that here? Or the universal cycle theory? Um, or, um, you know, read one of Borkert's books. You read the infinite universe theory. I've got it, I think, in the electronic form. Uh, anybody who's talking about nothingness to somethingness, read infinity. You've got to read it. Um, all you'll do is you'll be have people who've thought a lot about that and will uh, maybe more than you have. And again, no offense, there's, there's a lot of people in my in the chat right now that know a lot more about a lot of things than I do for sure so um, but I would say be careful it's not you know we got we can't, can't worship Tesla Tesla was a great guy but there's no such thing as genius genius in our heads is something we make up that we think there's a super brain out there that oh this person has uh, magical calculations we have people who have brains that are wired weird that they can remember everything that in their brain yeah brains will have different formations once in a while and they can remember every event in their lives so that's not a genius uh, they can write they hear music in their head and they can write it down that's not necessarily a genius the way I look at it is there are people who can do amazing things but they're still human beings so but they're not super brains. The kids that are getting PhDs when they're 11 years old in uh, theoretical, uh, in, in astrophysics, uh, aren't 20 years later aren't three times as smart as us. So if they are double, triple smart as, as us, a, a typical 11 year old, when they're 30, they're not triple smart as the 30, that same 11 year old when, uh, who just was doing regular stuff and the genius kid at 30 years of age, they're about the same level. So we got to get out of this genius idea. He was a genius. Uh, he was just, he was good. He, he did a lot of stuff that was really interesting for sure. But again, if you don't have a model of the universe, you can't sit there and say, this is right or this is cool or I'll buy this. Because then you, you got to have a model. If you don't have a model, what, what are you going to base, base your, your guessing? You're guessing. The modern spin of tensile energy is a microwave transmission. Power is generated at a location bounced off satellites to power receiving stations. Not going to happen. Um, we have solar power, right? And that's pretty weak. And that comes from a sun. That comes from a blasting, ridiculous thing that if you go even halfway to the sun, you're you're screwed. I mean, so we got to be careful. We can't, the pro, here's, this is actually good. I should write this down. I'm going to write this down. This is a good video topic. Uh, Tesla and invisibility. And invisibility is this, I think, this idea with Tesla that, hey, we've got these waves and they can, we can just shoot them through. You know, there's there's waves going through all this stuff. Oh, we can just shoot a lot of it and then transmit. No, 
there's effects. There's nothing in the universe that you can shoot through that doesn't have effects. Everything that transmits anything, power, whatever you want to call it, whatever you call it, whatever it is, it's an effect. If you transmit a lot of it, it's going to fry things. It just, it just doesn't work that way. This, I think this whole idea with Tesla is that we are working in an invisible world that just goes through everything. So we could just send an immense amount. It's the, we're still okay. No. Because if you have a model like we have a model with nucleons and things are waves, uh, waves of particles coming at you, those same particles make up atoms and go around them, they're going to affect them. This is why if you go into a radiation place where you have radiation, where you have stuff pounding that's what light is radiation is stuff that's pounding you if i want to break a hole in this i do this if i want to break a hole in it i just don't push on it it's not going to go anywhere so this is what's happening but of course this is all models these are physical models that people have so we've got to be able to uh, understand that so i'm going to do tesla and invisibility and the problem of invisibility because i think that's where people get uh, it just hit me it, the idea is we can transmit it's got. It's sort of like light. You cannot. Here, here's what Borkert said, and he's absolutely right. And this is tired light. It's as simple as the simplest concept. You can, if you remember one thing tonight, remember this: light goes at the speed of C. If I shine light from somewhere, or it's reflecting off my glasses from the screen, you can see that there. I'll get rid of it. Oh, now it's gone. You know those uh, light particles, uh, or the particles that are making light, or the waves in the particles that are making light. Those are traveling at sea, and then they go out. It isn't going to go in a perfectly straight line necessarily and, and stay at sea. Nothing goes forever without any change. You can't send out some probe at this, this amount, of, amount of speed, and it will not be affected because space is never empty. It's never empty. It's never all full. It's never all empty. And if unless you read Borkert and really study that concept that's a modern concept of, that you don't hear in college you that's the problem with tesla tesla has this idea that it's invisible so it just goes everywhere i can send it through this wall so why can't why can't i send a bunch of stuff to that wall and i can power everything well, yeah you can also kill stuff that's alive you're also going to affect atomic structure but you, you can't say it. it you can't, I think that's where he didn't think. That's why he didn't have a comprehensive model, physical model of the universe in his head. Oh, nothing as it seems. So, But it isn't simplex. Hey, I'm starting to get the lingo. That is Ken Wheeler stuff. Hey, is that Ken Wheeler? Nothing isn't as it seems. Well, if you are Ken Wheeler, uh, applaud your work. Love your work. Um, or, alrighty. Tesla mentions his idea at a minimum of 35,000 feet and up. I, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm your science therapist, guys. You cannot just magically say, here's the problem. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do, do a video on it. I'm writing it down on my... Sunwest mortgage statement. I gotta pay my mortgage. Anyways, I want to thank everybody and um, who's come during these uh, chats. I hope they've been useful to you. Um, I think it's great to interact. Uh, that's that's one of the things. Like I said, if you work in isolation, interacting is going to help you. If you are a person and you're working on your own stuff, and you think it's worth something. Get out there and circulate. I know it can be scary, but it's worth it. We're not gonna, we're not going to the CMPS. We're not a tribunal. Believe me, I have I have heard things that I don't believe almost any of what that what the person's talking about. Um, for instance, I'm not sure. I am really not a believer that gravity is because the Earth is moving up and pushing on me. This man says differently. Is he right and I'm wrong? Or I'm, is he wrong and I'm right? I don't know. But he's got a lot of great stuff in here. Even if I don't agree with that premise, 
he has got a lot of models for atomic structure, which I'm going to look at from my model. And I applaud him for putting, you know, together. So I try to understand the system. So I'm saying for you guys, circulate. Do a talk on Saturday morning. Uh, here, oh, oh, I, I showed you, didn't I? I showed you the web page for our homepage. So you, you saw that. Go to our homepage. Check it out. Check out the discussions. Um, write a paper in our proceedings. Take one of the papers, get in proceedings. You talk, if you put it in the proceedings, you have a uh, almost a 100% chance of talking at our conference and, and having uh, as many as, as, as few as 20 minutes, as, more, as, as, as much as 40 minutes, sometimes 50 minutes to talk about it and then have discussion about that afterwards. It is a wonderful thing to do. So I encourage you to join the organization. Um, but if you want to work in isolation, that's totally fine. I'll come and steal your good stuff, put it in my, my model, and our model will win the model prizes, and you'll come back, yeah, you stole that from me. I go, certainly did. But if that doesn't bother you, then that's good. Go for it. I'm just saying, if most people want to come up with models and theories because they uh, want it to be used, they want to say that, hey, I've discovered something. Circulating is going to make that your chances of that a lot better can't even get proof from science that is lame and testable laugh out science doesn't need to supply proof of gravity existence I'm not sure yeah I can I mean there's a force that we have innately that we understand and that's gravity uh, again at least three or four different models you got Bill Lucas's model that says gravity is actually uh, a decay process in the subatomic level. Uh, you have gravitons or particles. Um, gravity can be entrained ether models have that. So uh, not I don't know as much about lattice ones. Okay, James Carter. Yeah. That's an idea. I applaud him for doing it. He works in isolation for sure. He does watch this stuff. Um, you know, circulating is, I think, is important. But that's my opinion. And it comes from the fact of seeing such great people stagnate and the opportunity they would have. Because let's put it this way. If you have a really good and you're a good mind and you're working on your own and you're building stuff that is worthwhile, share it! Don't just put it on the internet and say, here it is. Good luck. If you read it, if people get it, they don't, they don't. Come on, get out there. I did it, and I was like, I'm Mr. Introvert from, you know. Wish I wasn't this way when I was younger, that's for sure. All right, guys. Layman experimental proof of uh, Layman experiment about gravity proof. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to head off. It's, uh, my goodness, it's coming up almost two hours. But uh, greatly appreciate it. Next week, I'll try to get some other person, if you have a suggestion. Maybe I'll talk about Tesla. But I think I'm going to do a, a video on it, and then we, maybe we can talk about it. But I am definitely going to check out the um, suspicious observers and, and get in contact with a guy and see if uh, we can hit something up there. Um, in in common, because I absolutely am you know a believer that mass media screws things over, inclu including science. We have the science evangelists. I've got a I've got a an article about that, which is pretty cool. I'll give you a sneak preview. I've been working like crazy over these days. I've been on vacation all this time, and I've been working like mad on two things. One's uh, getting a computer programming language out there into my company that my friend and I came up with uh, 20 years ago, which is going to be worth millions of dollars in business for that. And then we also have the physics stuff that we like to do. And also I've now got, I updated our website, uh, Science Woke, but um, let's see if I have it here. 
Oh no, it's in the big area. Hold on, I'll get to it. Uh, big picture, fighting science, big picture. That's what I'll go to. There it is. I'm going to show you a little bit of this website. Man, this website is cool. Everybody's going to say, shut up, Dave, and launch it. I need help. You want to help me out? Help me. Here we go. Here's one of the articles. Physics advantages are the mouthpieces for big science. This is just like right up uh, suspicious, uh, suspicious observers, folks. I talk about these guys, wanted dead or alive. I wrote one on my, oh, this one's public. You want to get, oh, did I take it down? I had so much flack from this. I almost rarely take things down. This is my personal website. Um, let's see, physics science. This is before I started doing all this stuff and I had more time. But um, why main seems right? Fuck, we were stuck to him. Yeah, I think I took it off. Mm -hmm. I wrote about uh, the physics evangelist. Uh, I'll have to tell you the story of, remind me, folks, uh, to tell you the story about, and I'm not lying, I'm not lying. I was at a, I was a member of the Documentary Film Association worldwide. Neil deGrasse Tyson was, 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 spoke there. I knew he was. I was sitting on the aisle with my wife because I was making my documentary and mingling with the Hollywood crowd and documentaries, the guy's squirrely group. And I'll tell you the story of why I almost tripped Neil deGrasse Tyson. That was my story online, but I got so much flack for it, I took it off. But I, I'm being honest. I, I really told my wife I'm going to trip him. Ask me about that. Hey, I'm Dave DeHilster. <coughs> uh, uh, Dave DeHilster. Remember what I always say. Stay critical. Stay thinking. Uh, I'm your science therapist. And remember, trying to get you to the promised land will become science woke. And thank you, you guys, for during these uh, uh, chats, pointing out new people to me. It's absolutely great. Uh, you guys know a lot about a lot of stuff I don't know. So it's a two-way street. I hope I can put on top of that 25 years of hanging out with the best minds and today on the cutting edge in physics and cosmology and philosophy and mathematics. And so hopefully, I hope I can put it on top of that and find common ground like I did today. And uh, take care. Have a great holiday. If I don't see you, I won't until 2019, which is going to be an absolute great year because this Science Woke will be launched. And uh, we're going to be heading full steam ahead and think about it please think about joining the cmps okay you don't have to agree with everything but you're going to have people give you really good feedback it's a great place to learn and make your own work better and better ciao for now guys